There we go. The scripture this morning is taken from the book of John, the 20th chapter, beginning at verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met and, uh, were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he, but he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who do not see and still believe. Now Jesus did uh, many other uh, signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Most holy God, we give you thanks for your word to us today, already so beautifully displayed in the wise answers of the children and their excited eyes, and, and also with the music, and now your word. And we pray that these actually be spirit-inspired and life-changing, transforming as words for our lives as you've always intended them to be. So we give you thanks, and we ask that in our hearing, you may be more alive than ever. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Last month, our church went into the community and built three ramps, as many of you know, wheelchair ramps. And this is a mission that we do quarterly. Um, for that day, though, we built a small ramp, a medium ramp, and a large ramp that we were all going to meet on and work on. I was sent to the small one, and for some reason, even though we had more people than the medium one, it took us as long to build that little ramp than any others. And it wasn't because of our abilities, I promise. I'm experienced with the drill now. But <laughs> it's because, for a while, we had one drill and no electricity. So our own Alan Bates, who was blessed the 9 o'clock service with his presence, and got tired of waiting, and here's what he did. Okay, Alan, what are you doing? <laughs> what I do every day, doing things as efficiently as I know how. <laughs> this would be how an Aggie uses a power drill. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't eat that much for breakfast, so I don't need to pick my teeth with it. This is the best I can do. All right, gig them. Gig them! No offense to the Aggies, we just happened to notice he was wearing a hat. 
<laughs> Very funny guy, and we quickly realized that we needed electricity. <laughs> and once we got that electricity and more drills, our lives became much more easier. We as homeowners, we know that if we don't pay our PEC bill, we're not going to have electricity, are we? We have to plug into the energy source. As humans, we know that if we decide to quit eating, our bodies will wither and we will die, probably. We need water and food as a source of life. And not just junk food, food with nutrients to keep us going and to feed our bodies. And we as Christians, that's no different. We need a spiritual source to plug into. And not just Sunday mornings, but every day. And this is probably the part of our lives that we neglect the most. But we need that spiritual energy to continue to wake up and walk out those doors and live our lives as fully as God intends for us. That's what the, the disciples learned pretty soon with the, the resurrection of Jesus. According to John's Gospel, the disciples had not yet encountered the risen Lord. Um, for Easter, I preached out of Mark, but for John, Mary Magdalene had seen the risen Lord, and Peter and James, um, John had seen the empty tomb, but they had not actually seen the risen Christ. It was on the evening of the first Easter, so it would have been the evening of the morning of the empty tomb discovery, so it would have been a Sunday night, and they were all gathered in a room behind locked doors, and they were afraid. The religious and the government authorities had tortured and crucified Jesus, so who's to say that wouldn't happen to them too as Christ's known followers? Who would be next on the list to be executed? So they huddled together in fear, probably wondering if life would ever be the same again. And then suddenly, from out of nowhere, Jesus appears, and the first words he says are, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I love it. We may not gather together behind locked doors for fear of losing our lives for our faith, but don't we huddle together and talk about things that are of great concern to us? Gas prices, our health, financial problems, jobs, war, terrorism, family members, relationships. The list is never ending. Like those disciples of long ago, fear still has a way of gripping us and making us wonder if life will ever be the same again. And yet today, Jesus still appears among us. Can't you feel it? And says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. The disciples are overjoyed to see their friend Jesus alive. Can you imagine the party they must have thrown? Jesus is alive. And they celebrate this glorious event. We too need to continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus every Sunday and every day of our lives. There's nothing, no problem that this man who conquered death can handle for us. I mean, God created the beauty and the splendor of our lives. And look at the children that God created in our midst. There's nothing that God can't handle in our lives. And he says, peace be with you. That's something to celebrate, I certainly think. But then he gives the disciples the bad news. And he says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Can you imagine the sound of silence in that room? And then the whispers of the disciples. But... They crucified you. They whipped and beat you. I'm not so sure I'm ready to be sent in that way. I can't imagine that they must have just been thinking, I don't know that I want that kind of life. What about us? Do we really? Do we desire a life where we might op meet opposition? Where we're not welcomed all of the time? where our way of lives are not always accepted by the world. And Jesus says, continue my ministry. My friend, finish the job. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. 
if we are to continue the ministry of Jesus, and hint, we are, we must have something that will allow us to encounter any kind of opposition with the love and grace that God gives us. And that means we must be plugged in to the power source of the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathes on the disciples and all of us the breath of life, the Holy Spirit, and fully equips us to continue his ministry of love and forgiveness. I mean, really, if you look back at Genesis, from the dust of the earth, God created man. But it wasn't until God breathed life into man that this man became God's good and perfect creation. When we first come out of our mom's womb, our mama's womb, if you're from the south of Texas like me, that first breath we take as a baby is God's breath. And when we die, that last breath that we take is Jesus breathing us back home. I love it. That breath. We are nothing without the breath of God in our lives. All that we have accomplished, all that we have, everything that we do, is nothing without the breath of God. And out of nowhere, Jesus appears and breathes on us and says, Peace be with you. He breathes on us and provides us with the very life that God breathed into the nostrils of Adam. It's a holy halitosis. <laughs> Added Batman at the early sentence. <laughs> See, I knew Jody would like it. <laughs> the United Methodist Church overall is in a great need of a Christ-breathed <clears throat> holy halitosis. We, delegates from all over the United States and the world, are meeting for General Conference. We meet every four years, and we are sending delegates to Florida. And they are meeting for a couple of weeks in a couple of weeks. And they need our prayers, because what they vote on will affect how we do ministry. For too long now, I believe that the church overall have been going through the motions, and we've been attempting to do things under our own power. For too long, we've run ourselves ragged, trying to please God in our own strength. For too long, we have seen really good churches with really good people dry up and close their doors, all when God longs to breathe new life into every one of us and quench our thirst. The church is in need of an energizing power of the Holy Spirit, and our prayer must be that Christ will breathe new life into our churches. If our church here, locally, Kyle, is to carry on the mission that God gave us, which is to go and make disciples, then it will be the work of the Holy Spirit that does it. If the children of God, which is all of us, if we are to bear fruit, of the Spirit, it's through the Spirit that the fruit will come. I mean, personally, you know it's exhausting to try to live your life on your own strength, isn't it? Things never go right until we stop and pray. I've shared this with you before, but a pastor mentor, um, it bears repeating, he told me when I was discerning my call to ministry over and over and over, he said, you can run from God, Barbara, but boy, does it make you tired. And he's right. We weren't created to run this life, this race called life, on our own. That's why the community of faith is so very important. We study scriptures together. We pray for one another and for the world. We tangibly support each other when somebody falls on hard times. We breathe life into each other, all while being plugged into our source, the Holy Spirit. You see, Adam didn't come to life until God breathed life into him. The disciples, they were gathered in fear until Jesus breathed life into them. And then they became the great witnesses of the church, and the church grew in astounding numbers. Are your worries and fears causing you to have a lack of faith? Really hear these very first words of the resurrected Jesus. Peace be with you. And then I invite you to draw close to God. 
Meet him in a face-to-face -face moment so close that you can literally feel the breath of God on your face. That's when your fears and doubts will be changed into a person of transformed person and a person of strength. That's when you will be empowered to carry on the work of the redeeming love of Christ. So I dare you. I double dare you. Do you dare meet him face to face today? Let us pray. Oh God, do we dare meet you face to face in this moment? Can we get close enough to literally feel your breath on our faces? And will we take the time this week to be alone with you, to be empowered, and to be able to love you with our whole hearts? We do ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ who fills us with life in you. And all of God's people said, Amen. And now we will join together and we will sing the Spirit song before.